And we are back with this February 14th Valentine's Day episode of InfoWars Nightly News with award winning documentary filmmaker, best selling author, BBC News investigative reporter, ABC News investigative reporter, Greg Palast. And I got to tell you, I read his book recently. I got it a few months ago, didn't have time to read it. It is, I think, his best. It's Vulture's Picnic in Pursuit of Petroleum, Pigs, Power, Pirates, and High Finance Carnivores. And I wanted to get him on uh, to get the inside scoop on Mitt Romney, who's really behind him. Uh, also, what's happening in Greece being gobbled up. Um, they're now announcing world government by the private banks. So the Ponzi scheme operators don't go to jail unless they're Bernie Madoff, I guess, or Ken Lay. Uh, they actually take the planet over. And I want to ask him about some of these headlines. Israel working with terror group in Iran. Uh, U.S. working with Al-Qaeda in Libya. Just amazing uh, to see the dreaded uh, enemy, uh, Al-Qaeda, working so closely with our loving governments like Israel, NATO, uh, and the United States. But without further ado, joining us uh, via video connection Skype is Greg Palace. Greg, great to have you here with us. Happy Valentine's Day, guy. <laughs> now, I know you're always ferreting deeply into what's you know, really behind things. You exposed Bush, you exposed Obama. Now, what's going on with the golden boy uh, of the neocons, uh, Mr. Mitt Romney? Mr. R Mitt Romney, um, if you remember, he was the principal of Bain Capital, and everyone's just saying, oh, Bain Capital, uh, they're vulture capitalists. Well, but it's Bain Capital money that it's not his money that's in this race. Romney has an avalanche of money compared to the others, and no one seems to be asking, where did he get it? BBC Television asked me to get in and investigate and find out where his money's coming from. Under the guise of a of an operation super PAC called Restore Our Future. The number one donor for the Romney campaign, the guy who seems to be at the center of the whole thing, is a, is a guy named Paul the Vulture Singer. Now, I didn't name him the Vulture. Uh, you know, it, uh, he happens to be uh, one of the guys I'm targeting in my book, Vulture's Picnic. How did he get the name Vulture? His bankers gave him the name and, and he loved it, though now I think he's trying to rebrand himself. You have to understand, he is a billionaire worth about, he's worth about $4 billion. He's teamed up with the Koch brothers, David and Charles. Uh, Singer put in a million dollar check to restore our future, and he's given all kinds of other money. By the way, they don't even like Mitt Romney. Their first choice is Chris Christie. And, and by the way, they're maneuvering Romney into a loss. They're his supposed pack, but they're maneuvering him into a brokered convention where the billionaires can be brokers. Now, who is Singer and why does and why does he want a president? He doesn't care about Romney's politics. He couldn't uh, give a damn. He's, he is investing. He's investing in real estate, 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. Uh, Paul the Vulture Singer made his first killing, as all vultures do. They wait for uh, corporations to die, countries to die, people to die. And uh, his first billion was made when he bought a company called Owens Corning. It made asbestos. These were basically death factories where their workers' lungs were being turned to mush because they're filling with asbestos. They got asbestosis, and then you, you die a horrible, slow, suffocating death. When it was discovered that the company had been doing this and knew about it, they went into bankruptcy, and their executives agreed to give all their future profits to their workers who were dying. Um, Paul Singer swooped in, the vulture, Singer the vulture swooped in, bought the company out of bankruptcy for peanuts, and I don't even think he included the shells. He bought Owens Corning for peanuts, and then he used his political influence with a guy named George W. Bush and others to change the rules so he wouldn't have to pay the asbestos workers. They had to take about 20 cents on the dollar. They lost about 80 cents. What happened to the 80 cents? It basically went into to Singer's pocket because the company didn't have to pay their dying workers anymore. And the dying workers accepted whatever they could take. They were dying. Um, they just took it. And he kept that 80 cents, which added up to over a billion dollars profit. So with an investment of next to nothing, using political influence, not, not smart investing, political influence, he made a billion dollars, this guy. Then he just then he went after the uh, uh, Peru. He went after the Congo. I just came back from the Congo, following this guy's money down uh, up the Congo River. That's where Mitt Romney's getting his money. 
the characters behind him are not investors. They're not wealth creators. They're vultures. And they make, you know, when they talk about Vain, uh, Bain Capital being a vulture company, they're Girl Scouts compared to the guys who are actually behind Romney. Well, when you see the entire establishment media left and right giving the guy a pass, when you see the big neocon talk show host pretty much endorsing him, when you see all of this, it becomes clear he's who they want. And then you have the last head of Bain Capital, and of course, Romney's still highly invested in it with that so-called trust. Now you have uh, the last head of Bain Capital going to work for Obama to replace Daley. So it shows that uh, the people behind Romney are also those, to a certain extent, behind Obama, and many of the policies that they both support are the same. So this shows that the establishment basically wants to keep things uh, going in the same direction. And if you look at how Bain and others go in and buy up profitable companies, chop them all off, he calls that uh, wealth production. Uh, what do you see, uh, what are the goals of the people that control uh, Mitt Romney. I mean, who are some of these individuals? And uh, when you say Bain is nothing compared to them, what type of folks are we talking about? And why do they like Mitt? Okay, well, actually, the Deputy Secretary of the UN, and you may not be crazy about the UN, but he's certainly a guy who's worried about people in Africa. Um, he, um, he said that people like, um, like Paul the Vulture Singer, that they are causing babies to die. I was just in the Congo where uh, uh, Singer and his buddies took the money that the United States had set aside to help the Congo stop a cholera e uh, epidemic to clean up their water supplies. They claim that uh, some vultures claim that they that the Congo owed them money. I traced this so-called debt back to Bosnia and a three million dollar illegal payment to the ex prime minister of Bosnia, another country we, we pulled out with uh, NATO bombers, remember. And as uh, what happened was that we installed a prime minister who then took $3 million from one of these vultures and gave him the right to collect money from the Congo. It was all done illegally. The police in Bosnia have now said that that was an illegal transaction, trying to put their ex prime minister in prison. This is the type of money that is backing the Romney campaign. Now you have to wonder why. The answer is really simple. The, um, the European community, England, others are pressuring the US government to make Paul Singer's activity illegal. It's illegal in a lot of the world. You, you know, this guy's made billions through these, through these really questionable methods, going after the asbestos workers, going after poor Congolese. He helped the president of Peru, a guy named Fujimori, escape the country ahead of murder charges. And that helped him put $58 million of Peruvian treasury money in his pocket. I've been following this guy around the world, quite creepy. He needs, he needs a president in office who will protect him who will protect him because the other nations are asking the U.S. to shut down his operations. This is not investing. And I got to tell you that Paul the Vulture Singer, when I ran these reports, and don't forget, these reports are run at the top of the nightly news worldwide, except in the United States. You're, you're the exception, Alex, uh, allowing me to uh, report on uh, Romney's billionaires. And by the way, Obama's billionaires is too, you know, let's not forget. Well, well, let's leave some time for those guys, too. But uh, Romney's billionaire, uh, he had his goons call up my producers in London at BBC and say, we've got a file on Greg Pallast. Now, in the U.S., that would be the end of my career. But BBC said, well, Greg Pallast has a file on you. And that's you know my book, Vulture's Picnic. I've been following these guys a long time. But you have to understand why, who these guys are behind Romney. And like I say, it's not so much that they're behind Romney. Their super PAC called Restore Our Future isn't about restoring your future, Alex, or mine, or Romney's. It's their future. In fact, what they're really hoping to do, don't forget, Paul the Vulture Singer, the Cokes, and his friends, Paulson, a multi-billionaire guy, made $4 million billion in one year helping crash the U.S. housing market. That's another guy behind uh, Romney, wrote a check for $1 million cash 
Singer wrote a check for $1 million cash. Coke, half a million dollars cash. Then they pulled out their cash just before the Colorado, Missouri, and Minnesota caucuses, allowing Romney to lose. Let's not forget, he was allowed to lose by his super PAC. They didn't put in a dime. Why? They're not sure that they really want Romney. He's their second best choice. They want to control the Republican convention and name the guy that they want. And I don't think it's Romney. He's their second, he's their second choice. Well, I was about to bring that up. They've got even top Republican strategists uh, out there uh, running around now saying they could do a brokered convention. As you know, they changed the rules two years ago in 2010 to be able to do that. And they're now floating as the knight in shining armor, at least as VP, Jeb Bush. And I got to say it, I cannot stand Obama. He's run by some of the very same crew. But another Bush, I mean, this is becoming a hereditary dictatorship especially if they get a Bush in through a broker convention and not even running in a general primary. Well, I think they feel comfortable with Jeb Bush. I think they feel comfortable with Chris Christie. Um, and what they're mainly worried about is not even who these guys are. They're worried that, that Romney, Santorum, and Gingrich simply can't win. They need someone to scare Obama. By the way, they don't necessarily need to replace Obama, just scare him away from anything that might threaten them. Well, that's another These... question I want to raise right here. I have no doubt that, that News Corps is involved in spying and corruption and tapping of phones. And uh, all of that has you know, come out and people have been admitting to it. And one guy, the main witness, mysteriously dies. I mean, all of this is going on. Now they're talking about investigations here, indictments here. But the Justice Department's got Fast and Furious going on. They've got their own uh, energy you know, company scams going on, paying off donors. And so it looks like the two sides are jockeying to basically blackmail each other. And I do see News Corp softening on Obama with uh, you know, some hosts saying Obama's a great guy now. But, but since you're over in England and in New York, kind of a guy in between, uh, tell us what the inside scoop is on what's going on with the whole... Uh, news Corps situation. Uh, I mean, how much fire is where that smoke's coming from, and how does it tie into Obama? Uh, ties in plenty because I did an undercover investigation of one of News Corps lobbyists. I wore a hidden wire and pretended that I was a lobbyist for Enron. <laughs> and so I was hooking up with News Corps lobbyists to hire them in. Uh, this, so I did that for the Observer newspaper of Britain. So I went inside. I, I spoke with uh, Murdoch's lobbyists working, and they're working both at that time. They're working, by the way, with the Clintons. They're working, um, and they're working with Tony Blair. What they said is, look, as long as these governments can lock up with media, that they are safe. That's the game. So their lobbyists basically offer a protection racket. And they even gave me very, very specific examples of stories that were placed to protect these people. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, uh, like I say, I have these lobbyists on tape. These tapes were, by the way, broadcast on the BBC Nightly News. So I went inside. If you ever meet these guys and go inside, um, you'd be stunned at what they say about how they operate. I mean, it was just absolutely unbelievable saying, you know, that they that uh, they basically run stories past 10 Downing Street. They had direct contact with the White House. You know, what do these guys want? So when they feel like it, they, they shoot some bullets at the White House or 10 Downing and then uh, just to scare everyone. And then uh, they, they the, the tune is named. You know, there, there's all kinds of, uh, of back and forth politics here where someone's going to have to walk the plank. Maybe someone's trying to stab James Murdoch in the back from inside the organization, maybe even within the family. But, uh, you know, there, there are wider issues here. Um, I got to tell you that, you know, Piers Morgan is deeply involved in this stuff, and, and uh, that drags in CNN.